Welcome back to Bit Reviews, or should I say, welcome to Bit Reviews, because this is our very first episode. I am Kevin, also known as Kepson, and today we're going to be bringing you a brand new podcast. So if you missed the trailer, well, that's fine. I'm going to give a quick recap of what the show's about right now. So basically, this show is going to be a review on video games. Very simple, not very complicated. Uh, we're going to go through elements like story, gameplay, and graphics. And I'm always going to have a guest. So today's guest is Akil. If you want to introduce him. Hi, everybody. My name is Akil, and I'll be joining you for today's 8-Bit. So today, we're going to be talking about one of the new games that Pokemon has released lately, Pokemon Legends Arceus. This game had me super excited when I first heard it announced. A new venture on the Pokemon franchise. Pokemon has always been one of my favorites. So I thought it would be perfect to be the first one we talk about today. Uh, so if you don't know what Pokemon Legends Arceus it is basically a normal Pokemon game, except they added a more open world elements to it, and you can now go around catching Pokemon without needing to battle them, and it's just, it's really exciting. We'll get more into detail later, but for now, let's get into it. So the first element we're going to be talking about today is the story of Pokemon Legends Arceus, and personally, I don't find the story that great. I do think it brings a lot of lore to it, but there just really wasn't much to make me go, wow, and what do you think about that, Akil? Well, there weren't very mission, very many missions at all. It was kind of a very short storyline, but I think that's because the majority of the focus of this game was more around, you know, catching wild Pokemon, exploring the region, you know, finally unlocking the secrets of the Pokemon in the region. And while that doesn't seem very, you know, story-centric, it's a very non-linear storyline, I think it really adapted very well to the gameplay. So, yeah, while most people don't really like the storyline, I thought it was awesome. I, th I really thoroughly enjoyed it. Yeah, I guess that is true. You know, they decided to completely revamp how the gameplay works in the game. So, you know, they're more focused on that than actually adding story elements that made sense to me. One part that really gets me, though, is, like, why why would you send back? And, like, what what was the whole point of Arceus sending you back? I know it's, like, st like you stopped the Frenzy Pokemon. But once you do that, you meet up with Arceus, and then just nothing happens. He doesn't explain anything. He doesn't tell you why, and he doesn't bring you back. And it's, just, it's always one of those things that just bother me. Well, I compare that to a, to a common theological discussion. I mean, why would God do something in, in this sort of context? Arceus is, in this world, the God. His, the reasons why he does things are unknowable to us. Maybe the reason he sent us back is because he has us affect the past in a way that will affect the future. Maybe by us being in the region and being able to tame the wild Pokemon, we usher in an age where humans and Pokemon can help live together in harmony. Yeah, there are some great points. I actually never thought about that before. Uh, that, you know, trying to figure everything out and getting Pokemon to live in harmony with the people. And I guess it did have to take more than just getting the people to just say, hey, maybe Pokemon aren't that bad, and maybe getting Pokemon to get more used to humans. Um, but it is just interesting, you know, and especially how God literally just gives you a part of him at the end that you can just battle and play with, <laughs> which is a very interesting concept. But um, one thing that really struck me is how much lore this game brought uh, to the Pokemon franchise because they basically gave so many ancestors now to so many people and you're just like oh wow yeah that person is an ancestor of this person in the future or this person in the future and it's just actually really cool seeing that i think that was one of the great things to see you know i think i think that was that was awesome and one of the other things i think was really great about it were these side missions you know while obviously the side missions aren't required for advancement in the storyline i think they really provide a great like image of how people viewed pokemon before the time period and how they were gradually sort of adapting with them like there was an example where an old lady wanted to get rid of a chimchio outside of her house she originally wanted to move it somewhere else and then she she realized oh no that's not a great spot she wanted to move it somewhere else eventually she realized hey i love this pokemon he's my friend i want to hang out with him every day now yeah that is true uh and there's also another task like that where uh, Bidoof sneak into uh, Jubilife Village and are like supposedly causing chaos and then you capture all of them. And then a guard's like, hey, you know, like then someone comes up to you and they're like, hey, you know, maybe they can be useful because they love cutting wood. So maybe they can help me in my wood shop. And so then they kind of just the Bidoof adapt into the village and you actually see them around the village more and more. And like they actually like sleep on roofs and it's really cute. And it's just, yeah, it's just definitely interesting 
how they kind of incorporated it, bringing into Pokemon into this world uh, through other means. Yeah, it was. I I think it was really really cute how right in the beginning of the game there was almost no Pokemon in the village at all, and then the first mission you get or one of the first missions you get is to bring a what was it a Wormple for yes. um for the guy who was stationed outside of the Galaxy headquarters, and over time, you know, that's the first Pokemon in the village. Then there's another. Then there's another. Then there's more helping out with tasks around the village. You know, it's it's sort of a progression. It kind of shows how people are adapting to Pokemon and how they're actually you know using them. So like, def- definitely add like little li- like lore and little bits and pieces that are just really well put together. But I'm still I'm just bothered by the main story. You know, because you're just you're from the future. You're brought to the past. You help these people out. But like, I don't know. Just it just felt rushed, and I don't know what it is about it, but it just bothers me. Let me see if I can put this into words. So, like, in the beginning, you, you're, you like, brought into this world. You're meeting new people. They're very, they're very interested in you, definitely in the beginning. And you just kind of adapt quickly. And there's some aspects, like, you are a 15-year-old, apparently, and you're not confused or, like, asking people why. You're just kind of like, okay, I'm here. Like, that always barked. Like, little bits like that kind of just bother me. I mean, I get it's for just moving things along quicker because you are the main protagonist, and it's not supposed to... You, your feelings don't really count in this game ever. <laughs> um, but it's always, like... It's just little things like that that just... I don't know. Make me think the game could be so much better than what it was. Well, are you saying something more along the lines of where they'll try to send you back to the future or they'll try to, you know, talk to you about, you know, hey, what's in the future? Because I think, yeah, there are instances in um, side missions and even in the main mission sometimes where characters are actually talking to you about, hey, what's the future like? Hey, there's this. Hey, there's that. And there was also another character who was actually sent back to the past with you. Well, not with you, but at another point in time. His name is Ingo. And, um... Interactions with him are very interesting because you can see how even though he's from a different region and he lost most of his memories, he's still trying to remember part of who he was before he was sent back. Yeah, yeah, but that's still just like the little details that like make the game, like the story good, but like just the main story, like those are all side quests and you know, the main story doesn't really... So like they're the Diamond and Pearl Clan and they're like two rivals and we kind of learn that like they just hate each other, but over just a view like the whole thing is they view god differently but just physically like not mentally like they it does the same thing and it just kind of bothers me that like why just how he looks that's really good of why you hate each other and at the end you make them friends but you know it's just it's tiny things like that i don't know uh but let's move on now uh we gotta get into the graphics part of this game and oh boy the graphics if you've ever been on Twitter, if you've ever been on social media, you know people hate the graphics. <laughs> I don't blame them. Honestly, I do think there are some great-looking moments in the game, but overall, it's just... Eh. It's it's a Pokemon game, you know? Graphics aren't, like, top priority. I prefer thinking of the story and gameplay before I think about graphics. But there are just some moments where, like, in the distance, you see a Pokemon at like 2 FPS and I know that's a technique used for um, making games run better but it's just at least like have them hide maybe don't like just show them look that bad and there are some moments where like when you throw a water like a pokeball in a water the pokeball literally comes a PNG it's not even 3D anymore it's just a blurry PNG and stuff like that just really nitpicky stuff kind of bothers me But most of the time, I did really enjoy the graphics. It's just, they got to keep it consistent, you know? I I think that might be asking a bit too much of Nintendo. I mean, they are working with the Switch, which, I mean, it's a a very old console. Well, not very old, but in the console life cycle, it's approaching what we would say is, you know, supposed to be its replacement point, you know? So, like, I mean, the Xbox 360... Well, it lasted what, like seven years? I I don't really think it's it's practical to say, hey, we want a great game for a device which isn't going to be able to run it. Yeah, and I get that. I get that the Switch isn't a fully powerful system like every other one, but still, like, it, it was like 
I get that it's not going to look always pretty, but just, like, at least keep it somewhat consistent, like most games can do. Like, in Mario Odyssey, it looked pretty throughout. Uh, the new Kirby game looks really great. It's that Breath of the Wild, it's so consistently beautiful. But, like, in the Legends of Arceus, I get that they have more entities, and they have so much more in the background running, but it's just... Like, why can't you keep it consistent like they do to a, a bit more outgoing way? Yeah, there's a lot of ways you can improve, like, the, the, the how fast your game would run. But I'd imagine that a lot of them weren't available to the creators of this game because, I mean, yes, we take the example of Breath of the Wild, okay? Breath of the Wild, there's a lot of entities either way. I mean, it's kind of similar to how Pokemon does it. But these entities can exist as a sort of, hey, it's just a object there, or hey, it's just an enemy. You're not loading 20, 30, 50 enemies at the same time, or if you are, your, your game's going to lag a lot. Um, and also, the thing with Breath of the Wild and, you know, Mario Odyssey that I don't like as comparison points is they made, at least personally, my Switch, they made my Switch overheat a lot. So I needed to constantly have it, like, in a well-ventilated area. I couldn't be playing it under the covers. I, I think it's not really fair to compare it to, to those games because they, they did have a slightly easier time. Yeah, I get that. Yeah, that's definitely true. Uh, I was actually surprised how much Legends of Arceus doesn't overheat my Switch. Um, but I also did get the new OLED Switch, so that might be part of the reason why. I have not tried it on my old Switch yet. It very possibly could, but my old Switch is literally falling apart. Uh, <laughs> it is chipped and pieced, and uh, it's a bad example. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. It's just, I do think there are some beautiful moments, though. Like, um... When you go to meet the Hisuian Arcanine. Or yeah. Or the Hisuian Growlithe on top of, uh, on top of the, the, uh... The peninsula into the ocean that was beautiful the background yeah. was great the, like the peninsula looks great uh you know as long as you don't see the entities you know they're like they're not that it's not that glaring of a difference but if there is a difference you know it, it it's if you look for it you'll see it yeah i do think part of the graphics though it's just the world itself it, it's just kind of bland the world um you could tell like they kind of ran out of ideas of what to put into it for some reason. I, I don't know why. But it's just mostly trees, grass, and dirt, which is fine. You know, it's expected. There's not much reservation there. But there are signs of an ancient civilization. So why is this ancient civilization only on the top of Mount Coronet? Why isn't there more signs of them instead of just the one ruins down in the coastal Myerlands or anywhere else? There's just... There's no other signs of this ancient civilization that used to live here. And it's just, why isn't there more to this world that, you know, it's supposed to be bearing, but there are signs of people who live there, built there. So why aren't there more signs of that instead of just these one or two places? I mean, yeah, on, on the top of Mount Coronet, we see, yes, there's a giant ancient temple. And um, around Mount Coronet's peak, we also see, hey, there's a lot of ancient ruins around the place. But, I mean, think about it from the way you'd view a Greek or a Roman civilization. Why aren't there Roman ruins on the Italian coastland? Why aren't there Roman ruins everywhere, you know? There, there really aren't because erosion exists, you know, new people pop up, you know. And in this world, we've got giant fire-breathing monsters that will regularly just destroy things. And giant, sure. you know, rock-eating monsters that will just, you know, consume the ruins. I don't think it's entirely fair to say, hey, there's no so signs of an ancient civilization, because there are. They're concentrated in a couple spots, but that's the same way we'd view, like, Greek city-states. They are just concentrated in a couple spots. Yeah, that is true. Um, I Yeah, I'm not very good at depicting things in the real life like you, apparently. Uh, so I don't see it that way, like everyone else does. Um, or I see more way people screaming on Twitter see it. I need to get off of Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> all right so i guess we'll move on to gameplay now and honestly the gameplay of this game the most fun i've had in pokemon in so long they revamped everything and it's awesome to the catching to the battling it's just incredible what they've done 
And I think that definitely should, it's definitely where they put all their effort into. And I totally understand why they want to do something new with this franchise that feels like it's getting stale because they've been repeating the same thing over and over with nothing really new to it. So it's, it's really cool to see that they're finally trying to experiment with how this game can work and what they can change, but trying to keep the core at the same at the same time. And I definitely I really appreciate that. Yeah, so I kind of likened the um, the new atmosphere to the way that I kind of viewed the wild area in Sword and Shield, um, where it was a really great atmosphere. It was it was wonderful. You could free roam, you could explore. There's Pokemon popping up on top of the world. There's Pokemon in the grass. Obviously, we don't have the Pokemon in the grass anymore, which I'm kind of I, I kind of like because that that actually makes logical sense. Um, but yeah, it was a it was a massive new way to play the game and with a strong style and agile style in battles that completely changed it the complete lack of um ivs and the replacement of evs with effort um training values i can't remember what they're called i think it's training values yeah yeah. training values so yeah it was it was completely new it was completely different i think i think it did really well and honestly i've never had more fun in a pokemon game other than maybe platinum and that was a very very long time ago yeah i mean platinum was a great game you know i love platinum it was like one of my first games but uh time to get back to pokemon legends rcs so one of the first gameplay topics that you know we mentioned are is the catching abilities the new catching mechanics are just so great you know you don't have to enter a battle it's still luck chance but they definitely made it higher up. Uh, so you're not spending hours trying to catch a single Pokemon anymore. And that was one of like one of those things that just got really annoying after a while playing the originals. But now you don't have to do this. Catching legendaries isn't it's a challenge, but it's a different kind of challenge. It's not just RNG anymore. Uh, you actually have to either use your stealth abilities, you have to figure out how to properly use items to hit the Pokemon, break a barrier that's guarding it. And then you might be able to catch the Pokemon. I think it's just a great mechanic that they added to finally make catching Pokemon fun again. Because I never, because after you do it the first game, after you do it after a while, it's just catching Pokemon. Just it's really boring because it's just RNG and luck, and they don't make it. They, it wasn't as fun as it used to be. So now being able to catch the Pokemon in this brand new way made the game so much more fun to me, and it's just amazing. Yeah, but I. I'd like to say that I have a couple criticisms of the whole catching mechanic, the new catching mechanic at least. You shouldn't be... So in the Alabaster Icelands, which is a region in this game, there's a level 85 Garchomp. That is 15 levels away from being level 100, which is the highest level that's achievable. And also, it's higher level than any other Pokemon you'll ever catch in the game. It is also incredibly easy to catch. Why? Pokemon that are, you know, alphas that are so much stronger than the Pokemon that you'll be fighting shouldn't be, you know, a simple, okay, lure it away with some food, okay, hit it in the back of the head with a Pokeball, boom, you've caught it. I feel like there needs to be more of a challenge, maybe something similar to how the legendaries have it, where, you know, the alphas are guarded by some kind of shield, you know, that you have to whittle down, or you have to dodge, and you have to, you know, hit some weak points. You know, I, I think that... You know, catching stronger Pokemon should be a bit more of a challenge, but, I mean, I really do enjoy the way that catching weaker Pokemon, you know, standard ones that you find in the overworld, is fun. It's fun now. Yeah, I definitely understand that. Um, Once you get used to the mechanics and once you really know how they work, catching Pokemon gets kind of easy. A little too easy, honestly. But, I mean, some parts of it are really fun. I think the, uh, like, I mean, I agree with the Garchomp. Uh, It does, it's... When you first go out there and you don't really know how to use items properly, that Garchomp is a pain to catch, and you will not do it first try. But once you figure out how to use items properly, and once you figure out how to make it as easy as possible, that Garchomp is one of the easiest Pokemon to catch, along with every other Pokemon. I definitely think they did a good job with like some legendaries, though, like the Genies. Oh yeah. yeah. I only I ever ever I only ever hear complaints about how to catch those Genies. Uh, so many people hate it so much and I don't blame them because they were put just in the middle of the world and they have the barrier that have they hit them three times with either a sticky bomb or something an item in the game that would allow you to hit a Pokemon 
and you have to stun them with that item before you're able to throw a Pokeball at them or catch them or initiate battle with them. So, and since they're put into the middle of the world, most of the legendaries are actually just in their own place with no other Pokemon around, so they don't really add extra challenge. The genies are just in the middle of the world, surrounded by other angry Pokemon that are trying to kill you while you're trying to do this. So you're trying to be stealthy, trying to catch these genies, while you may have a Glalie come up and try to kick you out. <laughs> it's just, it, I definitely think that was the most challenging aspect of the game, for me at least, and I know for many others. Oh yeah, no, when I was catching the genies, um, I struggled for about an hour to sneak up stealthily on a lot of them. I th uh, the Azelf, or no, no, sorry, not the Azelf. The, uh, so when I was sneaking up on Landorus, it was incredibly difficult because, okay, wow, I'm sneaking up on it. Oh, suddenly there's a Pokemon right to my left that's hitting me with an attack. I had to take out every Pokemon in the area. It was a struggle to deal with. But that's not really because of how difficult the Pokemon was catch. It was more just incredibly annoying. Because the second it saw you, it wouldn't fight you. It wouldn't put up shields. It would just run away. It wasn't fun. It was just such a slog. Yeah, yeah. De I definitely didn't enjoy that moment. But I definitely... I definitely appreciate that they did kind of bring like an annoying tough moment into Pokemon because you don't usually get that in these games anymore, especially when you're a veteran who has been playing for many, many years and basically know every mechanic to the point and can just fly through every game. So now we're going to go give our verdicts for the game. And I personally am going to give it a 7 out of 8. I know I crapped out on the graphics. And I know I crapped on the story, but I do truly appreciate what they have brought to us. And the gameplay, I think the gameplay just makes up so much for this game because I think they did such a great job for it. And, you know, the story's not all bad. The graphics has some beautiful moments and can be great, but there's still little bits like that that just bother me. And the gameplay, the gameplay definitely is where it brings home for me. Yeah, I would also rank it a 7 out of 8, bordering on 8 out of 8. And I honestly cannot wait for another game similar to it to come out, like a Pokemon Legends Mew or Pokemon Legends Jirachi. You know, I would love to explore other regions that I've already visited, but just in the distant past, you know, going around, collecting Pokemon for the first time, because that's what I thought was the most fun about this game. You know, being there to view, you know, humans exploring their world, exploring, you know, seeing all these new species. Yeah, and I, I can't wait for what they bring into the future. This is definitely a great stepping stone. There's still much more work Pokemon can do on this, but I can't wait to see what their future. And I think that's where we're going to wrap it up. So I want to thank you guys for watching, and I hope you appreciate it. This is the first episode. Sorry if it's a little rocky, a little bit weird. Uh, I will get better over time. But I appreciate you guys for listening, and I'll see you guys in the next games.